So I see some people are still walking in, but uh, we can start, I guess. So before starting, I'm going to give a couple uh, random uh, pieces of information. Uh, for the um, buffs, uh, there's an etherpad where people can uh, put their, their buffs. Uh, it's linked from the schedule on schedule.com, so you can find it pretty easily. Uh, and uh, it will be for both today and tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow before lunch, uh, there's going to be an, a group photo or at least an attempt at a group photo. We'll try to have it outside, but we don't know exactly yet where, how and when. So we will give more information tomorrow in both rooms just before lunch. And I guess now I can start. So welcome again to, to KTM Forum. Uh, my name is Paolo Bonzini. I'm a distinguished engineer at Red Hat and we'll start the conference by giving a status update on KVM and things that happened in the last year. So last uh, KVM forum was virtual but was also in September and it was about at the time that uh, Linux 5.5 RC1 was released. Now it's a bit later in the 6.0 uh, release cycle. It's probably going to be out at the beginning of October. So we had basically almost six releases and uh, a pretty large number of commits, like 2,500, uh, of which 200 went to, to the stable releases as well, and the uh, remaining were like just for the current uh, release cycle. So this is going up uh, from uh, 2,200 and 180 in the previous six releases, but you can see that uh, the activity went up by more than 10%, but the ratio between uh, Commits and commits to stable uh, is roughly unchanged, uh, so we are not introducing more bugs, at least uh, relatively to the amount of change going on in KVM. C remains a very mature hypervisor, but with a lot of exciting uh, things going on, and in particular, in 5.16, uh, the RISC V uh, architecture was finally merged uh, upstream, so I guess we can give an applause to the RISC V maintainers. <laughs> And uh, for the past few years, I've given this uh, status update. I put uh, the commits in every release to highlight a release with particularly high activity, a release with uh, particularly interesting uh, things uh, uh, being contributed. But this past year, there was like a hectic amount of, of activity, like, Always. So in each group of five releases, so leaving out the last one from 5.14 to 5.19 because it's not completely released yet, you can see that we went up from uh, uh, 1,200 commits uh, like five years ago to 2,000 uh, this year. So it's like going up by almost twice as much. And uh, you can see this why. Uh, <laughs> It's mostly Google <laughs> sending out patches like crazy. <laughs> and uh, it used to be that Red Hat uh, was the first uh, with roughly the same amount, but now we have 1,000 more just from Google. So I guess another applause for Google and for the people that review the patches especially. <clears throat> and uh, this is uh, the amount of commits by architecture. You can see that uh, the risk five is particularly high in this, uh, in this year, even though it's uh, relatively is, um, less developed and with, with uh, fewer people working on it because it was, there was the, the first uh, set of patches that really got um, the, the support in KVM and then also supports in the test self-tests. You can see that the, actually the self-tests uh, are basically 20% uh, of uh, the um, commits. That's a lot. Uh, the, the ratio of uh, lines in the hypervisors versus lines in the self-tests is like one to three or something like that. Like, so for every, line of hyper, uh, for every three lines of uh, hypervisor code, there is one line of test code, and I think that's like probably the, the highest in Linux or close to the highest in Linux. And uh, there's also a bunch of changes going in in generic code for uh, doing stuff better across all architectures, and that's also an important thing in the evolution of KVM, so good to have. And uh, let's see what happened in the last year. Uh, one interesting theme that uh, I noticed is that we are using Linux library code more. Uh, 
uh, KVM tends to be relatively small and tends to do things um, on its own without much help from, uh, from Linux library code. Sometimes because it's just not necessary, but still this year we have new code for the MEM slot and the vCPU lookups using respectively the interval tree and the XRA data structures. And also the x86 page table distraction was uh, revamped and uh, is done using the Linux uh, con concurrency managed work queue. And I don't know if we will see this more in, uh, in the future, but uh, it's certainly a good thing to have and an interesting change compared to the past. Going to the single architectures on x86, uh, we have an API to have a continuous TSC over migration. So usually the way it works in QM, for example, is that the TSC stops on one side of the migration. It starts on the other side and mm, there's uh, one moment where the TSC stopped, but a few milliseconds passed. With this change, you, you do the opposite. Basically, the TSC, the, the clock cycle counter, continues to increase over migration and uh, it's basically like if the guests saw a really long SMM or something like that. Uh, there were many cleanups for the uh, APIC virtualization uh, and uh, many cleanups for the memory management unit, including the page table extraction that I mentioned before. Uh, the new scalable uh, MMU is now basically on feature parity with the old one and a lot faster, so that's good. An interesting thing is uh, the Zen event channel delivery in, in KVM. You may wonder why we need the, the Zen event channel uh, delivery in KVM, and the reason is that uh, uh, AWS is uh, running legacy instance types uh, on, on KVM while exposing the Zen hypercall interface. Uh, some things have to be done in the kernel and they were already there a couple years ago. Uh, the, the one that uh, is important for performance is event channel delivery and it's now in. And it also supports a bunch of changes and improvements uh, in, in other parts of the KVM code. So it's nice to have new features that maybe are a bit niche, but uh, they prompt more changes and more uh, removal of technical depth elsewhere. Another interesting one is uh, eager splitting of page tables on migration where you don't have uh, like loads of um, page faults when my, uh, dirty page tracking starts and instead you, you split them eagerly uh, in the background and that's good for performance as well uh, when migration begins. For x86 hardware features on AMD, we had a bunch of nested virtualization improvements, including support for accelerating like the nested nested, where the nested guest is also a hypervisor, which is a bit crazy, but it's good, uh, especially for, uh, for debugging and uh, uh, testing of, uh, of the nested virtualization code. In theory, you can go infinite levels. I don't know if you find bugs uh, before it gets too slow or not, but Anyway, these things help with uh, nesting even more. Uh, the EPIC virtualization uh, on AMD now supports uh, physical EPIC IDs greater than 255, which is also known as X2 EPIC because the physical EPIC ID more than 20, 255 is the X2 EPIC. On Intel, uh, uh, probably the biggest feature was uh, dynamic X save states for AMX, which is an uh, extension for matrix multiplication. Uh, this was uh, done more by Thomas Gleichner because uh, it was done in the common uh, Linux code. Uh, so thanks to him as well. Uh, virtualization of APIs and uh, something, that, something that is going on is uh, improvements on the performance monitoring virtualization, in particular uh, uh, precise event-based sampling. For ARM, uh, there's a lot of useful uh, things like, for example, um, new instructions for timed event wait, uh, wait for interrupt with timing and wait for event with timing, uh, asymmetric setups of the performance uh, monitoring unit, support for Apple M1 processors, which do some things that are apparently within spec but only done by Apple. Uh, doing suspend uh, and resume using the PSCI interface, uh, allowing a user space to choose which hypercall are available, uh, and uh, uh, guard pages and stack traces for the hypervisor stack because, as you may know, 
Arm also supports a mode uh, that used to be the legacy one, but now is also used for uh, protected KVM, where the, there is a small uh, trusted base running at uh, exception level two, uh, the hypervisor mode, and then Linux runs as a kind of privileged guest in, in exception level one. So in particular, uh, EL2 can now filter which uh, system registers are uh, available in EL1. Uh, some hypercalls are only available after in, uh, at initialization time and not anymore after to protect the hypervisor from uh, mischief uh, further. And also, um, EL1 uh, doesn't have to share all the pages from, from itself to, to, to the small hypervisor. It can only share a subset of pages if it wishes to, and that also helps reducing attacks of phase. Uh, for S390, a lot of the changes that went in are for secure guests. So for example, there's the story of secure VMs, uh, device driver for communication with the uh, firmware, uh, secure guest firmware, and uh, also virtualization of interrupts for secure guests. Storage keys uh, for the little that I know about S390 are uh, something that keeps on giving and uh, there were still improvements and fixes after several years of S390 being supported by KVM. Another important set of changes is maintenance. Uh, power uh, had relatively fewer changes, it's more stable and uh, the changes for power don't go, don't go any, anymore through me, they go through the architecture tree. On the other hand, we have a new x86 maintainer that are going to send pull requests to me. The details uh, are still to be decided because uh, it's the first release uh, where this has happened. So I won't go into the details because I don't have any and anyway, they're probably going to change uh, in the next few releases as we sort things out. So what's next? Uh, for x86, uh, uh, I will probably use the lot of free time that I now I have from having sub maintainers to improve the CI and make it more automated. But apart from that, uh, uh, it's probably going to be a lot of work on confidential on finishing confidential computing support in in the next year with the Intel TDX and uh, the third uh, step in enabling AMD Sev for with uh, SMP. And for the other architecture, I, uh, one thing that I've been noticing is that uh, people have been working on having more uh, uh, feature parity uh, with x86. Uh, for example, uh, around uh, paravirtualization para features, uh, there have been patches posted for ARM uh, on asynchronous page faults. Uh, uh, still time is already there on ARM, but not on RISC 5 and there are proposals being worked on in the RISC 5 uh, hypervisor uh, interest group. Uh, right now only for still time, but probably also for, for asynchronous page faults in the future. Uh, another thing that I've seen for ARM is support for dirty page ring uh, and uh, the scalable MMU, which have both uh, had uh, interesting uh, complications due to differences between ARM and x86, especially in, in the page table management area. And I think this is good because uh, with these architectures being in wider and wider use, uh, it's kind of nasty to have support only on um, on, only on x86 for some of these uh, these features or some some of these uh, scalability optimization. So I guess that's all. Thank you. I will leave uh, the stage to Alex for the QM update, and uh, have a nice KVM forum. Thank you very much.